What's up YouTube? Uh, we're gonna go for a little ride today. Um, we're at, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, 97 uh, Blazer here. Uh, one of the issues I'm having is I'm getting a really strange uh, clunking noise. I think it could be the torsion bar mounts on the rear where it goes across the cross member. I'm gonna see if this camera will pick it up here. Fire this guy up here. It's gonna be kind of hot in here, but I'm gonna turn the radio off if you want to be able to hear it here. It's gonna be warm in here, but I'm pretty sure you can hear it better with the um, with the windows up, the the knock and noise. That's the other thing. Sometimes when it's warm out, the the noise isn't as dominant either. Um, I know when it rains, the noise gets really bad. Uh, it's basically whenever you go over any kind of bumps of any kind, it just <clears throat> there's a knocking sound um, that comes from basically under my seat. Now this is a two door model, so uh, under my seat would be the cross member that uh, the torsion bar uh, is actually connected to the rear of the torsion bars, and they have the little. Um, they look like almost like a type of stabilizer bar or sway bar link bar. Uh, link almost is what they look like. There are these two, um, these two little metal links with bushings on each side, and there's a screw that goes through, and that's what mounts the actual um, torsion bar <clears throat> support beam across uh, the frame, um, across the vehicle. And I think that's where my noise is coming from. Now I'm uh, on the Eric the Car Guy forums. And a gentleman on there actually replied to me today as far as my post regarding my question about what this noise could be I'm hearing. And his reply come back and said that uh, it wasn't very popular, I guess, for when he was a mechanic for GM for the torsion bars to make noise. That he thinks it might be the bushings on the rear sway bar links, um, which um, for some reason with two-door blazers, the... the there's a lesser variety of parts for this. When I search on like online um, auto parts stores, there's a lot lesser um, options. And the one option is only Moog, which a lot of people say, you know, buy Moog, buy Moog, that's the way to go. I agree to an extent, but at the same time, Moog is just, in my opinion, overpriced. Uh, and uh, they might have USA scratched on a box, but most of the time they're made in India or China anyway. So. Uh, if you want to get political on that, um, they're really not all that much better than the generic brands in some cases. So I think we should be good now. I was letting it run for a couple minutes. I'm one of those guys, or even when it's 90 degrees out, like it almost is here today, um, I still like to let the oil circulate. So I'm going to at least e-brake, and uh, as soon as I get to a point where I know it's going to make this noise, I'll shut up. Make sure nobody's behind me. I don't feel like banging into anybody today. There's my Ultima. Hey. All right. Oh boy, is it hot in here. Whew. All right. So on this road, the only road in my housing plan here that they didn't pave. Why? I have no idea when they paved every other road. But anyhow, it's got a perfect example because there's a bunch. I don't even know if the camera's going to probably not pick it up. But there's a bunch of cracks. If you look right in the middle of the screen there, right above that green box there, you can see a crack going across the street. Some of these cracks are deep enough that you can hear this noise. So I'm going to shut up. I'm going to point the camera behind because the noise comes from the back and you tell me if you can hear it. Yeah, of course it's... probably not going to do it today. Of course, I'm making a video, so it's not going to do it. It's, uh, it's too warm out. <laughs> yeah, whenever it's warm out, the noise pretty much goes away and this vehicle rides like a, a brand new vehicle. Um, a lot of that has to do with the fact that the, uh, um, everything swells up and expands when it's hot, warmer out, so the suspension gets a lot quieter on this thing whenever it's warm, so try not to bounce you all over the place here and make you seasick, but I'm trying to find a place I can go to make this noise. 
Ah, uh, of course this road's nice and smooth. The time that you don't want a smooth road. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna be able to make the noise. It's too warm out. But anyway, it's it's basically like a clunking, popping noise. It comes from both sides. Sounds to be coming from directly under my seats area towards the rear somewhere. Um, the whole front end on this has all new ball joints and everything. I've done tons of work on this vehicle. I mean, any of you Blazer guys out there, or Blazer fanatics, that <laughs> you could probably name every part that I've already replaced on here without me even telling you. So, um, uh, let's go a little further here. I'm going to go across some railroad tracks. Of course, you'll probably get the noise of the, the bumps versus the noise of the actual noise that I'm hearing, but we'll try it. They're still, oh, this might be a good option. They're still working on paving this road here. So, this guy's being nice and letting me go. This might do it down here. Nope, didn't do it. Just sounded normal. Nope. That's normal. There's no excess of noise, no popping, no clunking. Uh, yeah, I mean, basically, when it gets wet out and it rains, the noise gets really bad. Um, and when it's cooler out, the noise is worse. Like, when it's one of those zero-degree days we had last winter, uh, that was when it was at its worst. Uh, so when it gets cold and when it gets rainy, it gets really out of control. Uh, if it were to rain today, that noise would, oh, of course, there's got to be sun. Every time I try to turn around, there's always somebody there. Please riddle me this. Why is it in the middle of the afternoon on any given day when you would think most people would be at work, there's always a car somewhere? Like, it just seems like, uh, I don't know. It just seems like this neighborhood or this area that I live in is too overpopulated. Uh, I live in um, suburbs, uh, Monroeville, PA, um, east of downtown Pittsburgh, and uh, it just seems like Monroeville area has become so overpopulated. Like, I mean, the town was originally a farm um, back in the day, of course, and all these businesses and homes and everybody migrated into the area and really, really, really filled up. I mean, it's to the point where it's actually quite annoying how um, filled up the area has gotten. I mean, just trying to go for a everyday drive or even to get from one end of the town to the other end of town, you, I mean, if you're not from around here, you'll sit in traffic. But from, when you live here, you learn all the little roundabout shortcuts that you can take to avoid uh, being stuck in, you know, gridlock traffic. Uh, our main road that goes through the town is route, uh, old, uh, William Penn Highway, which is Route 22, is, uh, goes, you know, slices Monroeville right in half. It goes right through end to end of Monroeville. And um, Route 22, it's just like, there's a red light. It seems like, you know, every, I don't know, 200 feet, there's a red light. Uh, and another intersection. I mean, it, it, it literally could take you, depending on, the lights are all in sequence too to keep traffic moving through town. So if you get one red light, you're pretty much gonna get every red light through the entire one end of Monroeville to the other end of Monroeville. Uh, and it's really annoying. Um, I don't even take Route 22. Uh, oh look, an old Ford there. That's for, uh, that's for Scott, uh, or I'm sorry, yeah, Scott. <laughs> As for Sean uh, Piscotti on the Hack and Pack channel on uh, YouTube, he just bought a, a 1980 uh, Ford uh, tow truck rollback, and I think he said it's called. And uh, we, uh, I just saw an older Ford. Every time I see one, I think of him now. He made a video actually of him trying to get it home. I was giving him some trouble getting home, and uh, I think it needs some carburetor work, he was saying. But uh, it's pretty cool, actually. I. Uh, the body itself doesn't look too bad on it either. I was surprised for that age, so. But, uh, yeah, I'm gonna probably shut up here. I'm just kinda, you know, I know I yak a lot on these videos, but I just like to conversate and get people's opinion and stuff like that. And I enjoy making these uh, little videos on stuff, but hopefully get some feedback from somebody. But like I said, yeah, I think the noises that I'm experiencing on here is uh, coming from the, uh, uh, sway bar link bushings or coming from the uh oh that's a nice nissan or coming from uh 
It could also be coming from the uh, torsion bar mounts. So, uh, I'm already up to 10 minutes on this video here, so. I don't know why everybody looks at me like I'm weird or something. Like, nobody can see that I'm holding the camera in here, and if they can, then they clearly have no life. But I just think it's funny that when I'm driving around town, everybody looks at me. I'm not speeding, I'm not breaking any laws. Everybody looks at you weird. Uh, is that a Pittsburgh thing? Is anybody else from Pittsburgh watching this? Like this guy out in his yard here, he just looked at me like I had three heads. Like I, how dare I be driving on that street? That's a public street. It's just people are so weird around here. Uh, very backwards in Pittsburgh. And once again, I always get political when I start doing these videos. But people in this area are just so ridiculously backwards. Um, they're so afraid to try new things. They're all set in their ways. Um, they're not very friendly. Everybody's in a hurry. Everybody's moody. Is that around the world, guys? Is, I mean, because I know I got a lot of worldwide subscribers that watch my videos. Is that something that goes on all over the world? Is everybody so backwards and in a bad mood all the time? I know I'm set in my ways and I'm guilty of, you know, being grouchy. But I'm grouchy and I'm not trying to push the blame here, but... I'm grouchy because of the way a lot of other people are. I work with the public, the general public for what I do. I work for a big box store uh, in uh, sales and service department. And uh, I found that uh, the general public and people are just so downright nasty. Everybody's so uptight and, you know, in a bad mood and takes all their problems out on you. And it's just like, I don't know what's wrong with everybody. And why everybody's in such a crappy mood all the time. Um, me, I mean, I try to be in a good mood. I try to be positive. And that's why I work on cars. You know, for a lot of you car guys out there, you probably find that you have a better relationship with your cars. Not to mention the feeling of accomplishment you get whenever you do fix something. Um, yeah, this thing hits hard. I don't know if you've noticed that, but this thing hits really hard. Too. None of that torsion bar noise that I was describing, none of that's coming up, so... It's quiet as a mouse today, of course. Um, but anyhow, um, yeah, just people, just the, the general point I'm trying to make is like, people are just, they look at you like you're weird. You know, everything you try to do, and you know, everybody's in a bad mood. And, you know, maybe if anybody is watching this video the whole way through this and has made it this far with me yakking, um, maybe you can give me some feedback on that on an off the topic subject. Like, why are people, is everybody in the United States like this, or is it just. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, I plan on here, I was going to go, I had a few days off, I was going to go up to uh, New York uh, and visit with uh, Sean. He's, like I said, on the Hack and Pack channel. I wanted to go up and just meet him. I've uh, learned a lot from him just watching his YouTube videos. And uh, he's a really funny guy. He, he, uh, I've, you know, done reconstructive surgery uh, and rust repair, I should say, on my blazer here. And I've gotten really good at and it's all from just watching his videos and doing what he says to do and I've had superior results for being an at-home do-it-yourselfer you know and um, he's just a really cool guy to to watch I, I really enjoy watching him another guy that I really enjoy watching um, kind of doing a little advertising here is uh, Eric the car guy uh, has his own channel it's actually called Eric the car guy Let's see if we can Oh, it made it a little bit, but I know the camera didn't pick it up. Probably because of my big mouth. Now, I got a little, little hint of the noise I was talking about when we went over that pavement level change. Um, but anyway, yeah, Eric the car guy, uh, he does how-to videos and discussion videos and stuff. I watch him a lot, too. So if you found this video and you're into car stuff, check him out. You know, uh, really cool guy, down to earth. Um, fantastic to watch. Love when people just do UEs in front of me without even looking. Uh, fabulous. That's another thing in Pittsburgh. Nobody knows how to drive either. Um, so I'm going to have a couple other videos coming up today. And uh, I just wanted to uh, throw this one up for now and get some opinions. So uh, we're almost back to my house here. So we're... Look at this as a nice uh, demonstration of a Chevy Blazer, too. Whee! Yeah, a lot of guys here, you see that van over there, that white van there? A 
lot of guys like to come down here and fall asleep. Uh, different contractors and stuff like um, truck drivers, delivery guys, you know, different maintenance guys. They'll come down here and park a truck and sleep on their shift. I think it's funny. And then park down here. A couple places I've seen them do it there, and there's another place at the end of the road we were just on. So, um, that torsion bar, I think I'm just going to go ahead and uh, do that today. Um, those torsion bar mounts. I, I've got them set up on Advanced Auto's website. They have a promo code on Advanced website. Uh, it's called TRT30. The letter T, the letter R, the letter T is in Tom again, the number 30. If you put that in for a promo code, it takes like 30% off or something like that. Uh, and do set it up for in-store pickup for your local Advanced Auto parts. It gives you like a huge chunk of change. Like I'm saving like $22 on these parts just by applying a promo code. Yeah, and this thing makes a lot of noise anyway because it's typical GM with all their plastic crap that they got to put in here. But uh, I'm going to pull in here in front of my mailbox and I'm going to climb under this thing here and turn it off and just show you what we're talking about here. And shut it off, put the e-brake on, just leave the key. I'm going to open this window. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, crank windows in this guy. There ain't no luxurious options in this. The only thing luxurious in this is the fact that the window actually goes down. Um, yeah, this is the uh, two door. There we go, two door model. So, I'll climb under here and give you a quick look at what we're working with here. I think you'll see sick. So, oh, oh, there it is. So, this is the cross member here that the torsion bars go through. And get the camera to focus. You can actually see right there is where the end of the torsion bar is. That's the little key right there. That's the height adjuster bolt right there. And the mount, if I can get this to pick up, there's the mount right there. See the mount? It goes in through a screw through the frame. And there's a screw right here. I should probably start soaking these down before I get too ingenious or, or get too involved here. But if I take the front wheels off the ground, um, do I still need to compress this? I guess they call this a key here. Do I still need to compress this up before I remove this bolt would be the real question. Um, I don't know if you can see how well you can see if those bushings are not too hot. They look, it's probably not picking up on camera, I don't know, I can't see what you're seeing. but um, So I don't know, we're going to find out here. I'll probably take this whole bar out of here and clean it up. Maybe sand it down with wire wheel and maybe undercoat it. Make it look a little better while I have it off. Now the other thing I was told is these sway bar links here could be bad. And if, well they are bad, but still. If you look at them puppies, look how terrible they look. Look how dry rotted and cracked. Um, I mean there's still bushing in there, so it's not like there's no bushing. But from what I'm understanding, that could be where my popping noise is coming from there too. Or is it coming from here? These bushings here on the leaf spring, front leaf spring bushings, they look like crap. I mean, look at that. There's nothing, nothing left to it. It's actually falling apart. So, yeah, that's... This is about where the noise is coming from. Now, there's the body mount there. It's looking... Oh, I mean, this thing's it's a 97, so... Yeah, I mean, I uh, I just can't duplicate the noise that I'm getting here, so I don't know where it's coming from. But anyhow, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and spray these suckers down some penetrating oil, because I know those are going to be a, a total bitch to get loose. So, um, I'm going to hold off on those rear sway bar links for now, only because they're actually quite expensive, believe it or not. They're, they're more expensive than the damn these things, which I don't understand. But anyway... I'm going to have to get a some kind of compression tool too to compress these suckers. And uh, I'm going to try to clean all this up too when I get in here. Make everything a little happier. So, but uh, yeah. Uh, maybe if I charge this uh, camera up, maybe I can try to make a YouTube video of me doing all this and making a mess. So, But it's going to be time to go off to Harbor Freight and uh, go to Advance. i got to go ahead and order those parts. I think I'm just going to go ahead and try doing them today. 
get that done. That'll give me something to do. One of my last few days off of work. So, tires look pretty good. I got another set of tires in the back that I want to put on here. This is the body work I did here that uh, I learned how to do off of Sean. Look at that. You can see me in it. Look how good that looks, guys. A little dirty. Yeah, I uh, just wet sanded it and buffed it the other day. This whole section, what you're looking at right now, this whole section that I just recorded in the camera is all me. That's all metal that I put in. Uh, I riveted it, believe it or not. There's rivets right behind here. You can't see them. And I put um, door glass, body filler, and icing over it. Smoothed it all out. Primed it, sanded it down. Base coat, clear coated it. Look at that. You can see me in it. Hi. <laughs> um, this is all results from watching uh, the Hack and Pack channel. So. Well, we're up to 20 minutes, and I'm just chewing up battery life that I could be using for doing something productive here. So, but um, hope you enjoyed, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and shut up, and uh, I'm gonna go get the parts from Advanced Auto, and then uh, I'll be making another part of the video. So, thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe.